Hello everybody, Mr. Lake here with another chemistry instructional video. This time we're gonna cover nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. And not to lay all my cards on the table right off the bat, but this is gonna be interesting because these are the processes that are happening on the sun and in the sun. This is what drives nuclear power. This is what drives nuclear weapons. I think you'll be interested to know a little bit more about this. So let's start with nuclear fusion, which is what happens on the sun. You can see here some animations of, and they're not actually animations, they are video captures of solar flares on the sun. And by the way, the sun is so massive that the solar flares are like many times the size of the earth, just the solar flare itself. So when the sun decides to, you know, give off energy, sometimes it gives off a lot of energy. And so really this is just to remind you that the sun is a very hot place. Temperatures there are extremely high and there is a ton of energy, which makes it an environment that is ripe for atomic change, specifically nuclear fusion. Now, this is something that I'd recommend that you write down in your notes. Nuclear fusion is the process where two atoms collide with one another and stick together. They actually combine into something larger. So to give you an example on the right here, we've got two, hel sorry, two hydrogen atoms, and they're two different isotopes, hydrogen two and hydrogen three, but two hydrogen atoms with one proton in the nucleus of each, and they come together, bam, they stick together through nuclear fusion and they create an atom of helium. So there are a number of ways that this is important. First of all, it's a process that usually gives off energy, heat and light. And if you wanna get into that, it's because when these two things combine together, it usually creates an overall energy state that is lower than the two things existing on their own and that leftover energy is given off as heat or light. And so that's one of the reasons why the sun is also a very bright place in addition to being very hot. Um, additionally, not everything sticks around all the time. Sometimes particles will leave during this process. Like in this example, the overall, the atoms stuck together, but one of the neutrons did leave. And that neutron can go on and collide with other things and cause other stuff to happen. And then the third, and this is a very important point, is that this is how a lot of new elements are made, right? We have two hydrogens combining into a helium, which is a larger atom further down the periodic table. Well, what if two of those heliums combine and form, say, a beryllium with an atomic number of four, right? And you can see how this process would build. And this is actually one of the ways that new elements are created in the universe. So stars are extremely important because they're kind of like element factories through nuclear fusion, not only are they producing the heat and the light that is keeping our world warm, but they are also producing elements that, you know, when they supernova and explode, those elements can be used to form new planets. And then that planet has more than just hydrogen on it, right? I, I kind of went very quickly through a lot of different things there, but hopefully that made sense. And let's take a look at this animation of this happening. Right there, you can see the exact process that um, was in the previous video. You got a couple of he hydrogens here. They're going to combine and collide, and they stick together. A bunch of energy is released, and nitrogen leaves, and you have a larger atom than you did before. So nuclear fusion is, of course, what happens in stars like our sun. It is also the process behind nuclear reactors. So when we create situations on Earth where nuclear fusion can happen, we can get a lot of energy out of that. Uh, and it is also the, it is the science behind thermonuclear weapons. And what we're gonna learn about is there's actually two different kinds of nuclear weapons. This is the technology behind what you've heard of as hydrogen bombs or H-bombs or thermonuclear weapons. And you might already be thinking, well, it's because what's happening here is that we've got hydrogens fusing and that's creating the energy of the actual blast. Um, 
Which brings us to nuclear fission, the other process, which we also harness and use for different things. Now, nuclear fission, and it's really important to keep those two things together, fusion, think fusing. Fusion means to bring together and combine. Fission is like creating a fissure. It's dividing. Fusion means bring together. Fission means to divide. So in nuclear fission, something really big is being broken apart. So in this example here, we've got a very, very large molecule. We are seeing the nucleus of a uranium-235 atom, and it's getting hit by a neutron. So this nuclear fission is a process that is instigated by some sort of a, uh, usually a neutron, colliding with a nucleus. And that's going to cause that nucleus to become unstable for a moment, and then it breaks apart into two. This process also releases a lot of energy. And very important, you can see over here, it is releasing three more neutrons. Why is that important? Well, this process started with a neutron colliding with an atom, and then in the process it creates three more neutrons, which could then go and hit three more atoms like this and cause three more nuclear fissions. And that process would make nine neutrons, which could go and hit nine more uranium atoms, et cetera, et cetera. This is a classic domino effect. It's a classic chain reaction where you could literally start with, if you had a block of uranium, you could start with a single neutron, fire it in there. It'll hit a uranium, cause this to happen. That'll create more neutrons that will hit more uraniums and cause more and more and more and more and more until you get a giant. And this happens really quickly. So you basically get a ton of energy being released from a bunch of uranium atoms all at once, which is in fact, the exact idea and technology behind certain weapons and certain power producing processes. So just to kind of make sure that everybody has what they need written down here, here's some text. In nuclear fission, a neutron collides with the nucleus of a large atom, causing it to split in half. Now it's not always perfectly in half, but roughly in half. This produces energy and it produces more neutrons and those new neutrons can cause fission in other atoms, which is a chain reaction. Pause this if you need to, to finish your notes. I'm going to move on. Here's an animation where you can see that happening in a single instance, right? We've got a big atom, an accelerated neutron hits it. Boom. We've got two smaller atoms now and three neutrons. Now those three neutrons can go and cause a chain reaction like you see here. So let's say that this whole view that we're looking at is a sample of uranium, and you can kind of see how firing one neutron into the middle causes fission, which creates neutrons flying in all directions, which creates more fission, which creates more neutrons, and, and you could see how very quickly all of these uranium atoms would break apart and release the energy that they can release. I'm gonna skip that video. It's fun, but I don't think it's worth our time in this in this context. So this process is um, behind other nuclear reactors. So we have nuclear reactors for fission and for fusion. Um, and also, this process is behind what we call atomic bombs. So probably in the past, you've kind of lumped all nuclear weapons together as being nuclear weapons slash atomic bombs. There's actually kind of two different designations. There are atomic bombs and there are thermonuclear weapons like hydrogen bombs. Atomic bombs are the ones that we are more familiar with because they are the only ones that have ever been used against people. Um, which is really unfortunate that they've been used at all, but I'll save my, my commentary. Um, and basically you've got in these bombs, you've got a sample of something like uranium. And when the bomb reaches its designated explosion location, a neutron is fired into that sample, starting the fission process. And that creates that chain reaction where all of that uranium is going to go through fission very, very quickly in a very short amount of time. And all of that heat and light energy gets released in an explosion. And that creates the blast of the explosion. Additionally, it creates a bunch of nuclear material or, or radioactive material that spreads from that site and can cause further damage 
beyond that, especially to living things. So fission is a very useful process in the way that it can create energy for us, but it is also a very dangerous and risky process um, because of its implications in weaponry and also in the implications of what happens when our power producing efforts take a turn for the worst and that chain reaction gets out of control and out of our hands. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that happen in a couple of places um, with nuclear reactor meltdown. So there you have it. That's the primary information that I want you to take away from nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. I do want you to study this to a point where you can kind of designate between the two processes in your brain. So if I ask you, you know, to give me a brief recap of what happens in nuclear fusion and what happens in nuclear fission, that's kind of what I'm expecting. And also, uh, you should kind of know the difference between fusion and fission in terms of their uses. Right? Fusion is what happens in the sun, what happens in fusion-based nuclear reactors, and what's used in um, thermonuclear weapons. Fission is used in fission-based nuclear reactors and atomic bombs. And I just think that that's something that, because nuclear uh, power and nuclear weaponry is something that you actually hear about in the news and in everyday life, it's something that you should know the science behind. And there you have it. That's the video for today. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the future. And until then, take care of yourself.